Hey team, this is session 19, Storage Management and Partitions on Linux, the Linux Essential Series. Storage Management, that means we are going to talk about the disks, we are going to talk about partitions, we are going to talk about how to add the disk, how to create partitions and what are the commands associated with partitions including the demonstration. Of course, we will talk about the constraints associated with the fdisk command and the new utility which is available for the same purpose. At the end of the session is quite clear. The Linux file system administration, storage management and partitions, current system state, fdisk utility with examples, some partition types, jdisk with example, parted utility with example, changing partition times, uh, types, graphical options, example fdisk and parted. Takeaway is a, you can take you know from simple line if you ask me uh, this is one F disk utility with examples and G disk with examples and parted these are the three utility for partitions by the way if you have done installation of Linux there is fourth utility also which is not available once the system is installed and that is the utility which you see when you install Linux and you see a screen where you partition the disk, disk partitioning, automatic partitioning, you create a root boot swap partitions or you create LVM there or RAID there. That partition utility is not available once the Linux installation is done that is called a disk druid, disk d-r-u-i-d druid. So that utility is the fourth utility. So there are fourth four total utilities in order to create partitions on a given disk. There is a uh, uh, difference, basic difference between the uh, four different. One, the disk druid is, is available only during the installation. Number two, parted is available at the command line as well as uh, in the script in the programs. You can use parted utility. Like if you want to create a partition through the script you can do that using parted utility. Fdisk and Zdisk are not available in the script. They are command line interactive utility. You have to do them uh, at the command line. You cannot do, you cannot use them uh, in a script. That is a problem. So Fdisk and Zdisk has limitations. They cannot be used in script. They are available command line interactive. Parted is available at the command line as well as script. Disk Druid is available only during installation, not available after the installation is done. So, objective is clear, making partitions. To make partitions, we need to first add a disk to the system. So, let's add the disk and start the system and see how the disk appears. So, I'm sharing my screen and uh, you see that uh, the system. So, this is my virtual machine. I have four or five machines I am demonstrating and you know this is for cloud. Now this is server one which I want to change and for that I need to add a disk first. I need to have some extra disk for partition management for this purpose of this training and for this session. So I will go to the storage. This is one is IDE that is a DVD and this is SATA this is a disk. So I will click on the second icon of this to add a disk. Create new disk and then I create a disk here, new disk, disk 1, uh, 8 GB, let me create it to uh, 4 GB, that is sufficient for practice. So disk is added and now I will start this machine. Now we have uh, one extra disk on this machine which I will be uh, using for the practice, for practice, you know, demonstration purpose. So make sure that you have that extra disk for, in order to create partitions, right? In order to uh, practice the session, before you start your machine, you must add the partition. Oh, sorry, you must add the disk. Now we'll understand some theoretical concept, and then I demonstrate how to create partitions. File system administration. Most Linux administrators have to maintain existing system, not to add additional disk or partitions. Even you may not be requiring this command at all if you are trying for MySQL DBA. You may not have to do partitions management, you know. But then having knowledge, knowing the systems is good too. 
Critical skills related to file system include adding new partitions, creating logical volumes, mounting file systems and more. In many cases, you will want to make sure these file systems are mounted automatically during the boot process and that required a detailed knowledge of one single file and that single file is etcfs tab. Once the file system is created on a partition after adding a disk, you need to make sure that a file system is available after the boot and for that this file becomes important etcfs tab. Some file systems should be mounted only on a temporary basis just like your uh, uh, you know, DVD. The moment you insert a DVD it is automatically available. If you insert a CD it is automatically. If you insert a pen drive it is automatically. That automatic there is nothing called automatic in Linux. But you remove it it is, uh, it is gone. So on temporary basis the automatic mounting process is handled by auto mounter and that is a process which is running behind the screen auto FS. Storage management and partitions. It is easier to create partitions, logical volumes and RAID arrays during installation. Now the question is, what is the utility which helps you to create these partitions during installation? The answer is simple, disk druid. But once configured, a partition or logical volume or a RAID array each of these can be referred to single general term called volume. So volume is a partition, volume is a logical volume, volume is a RAID array, volume is a common term used for the space. In Linux three tools still predominate for administrators who need to create and manage partitions. FDisk, JDisk and Parted. FDisk is a FDisk and GDisk are the commands. What is the difference between FDisk and JDisk is quite simple. FDisk is used for old style MBR partitioning scheme which allows you to create five partitions total, sorry, four partitions total or uh, three primary partitions, one extended partition and then 12 logical partitions in the extended partition. So total 12 plus 3, 15 partitions effectively. F disk. J disk allows you to create up to 128 partitions. The interface of both is the same. It's, you will see the similarity between the interfaces of F disk and G disk. Partage is different. Partage is much more powerful and have more options compared to these two. While these tools can be applied to local hard disk and other media such as drive attached over a network. Before using FDisk, JDisk and Parted utilities to create modify a partition, check the currently available free space along with the currently mounted file systems. So we need to know why because ultimately if you have sufficient space why do we need to add a disk? Why would you require this FDisk and JDisk or Parted utility if you have sufficient disk space available? It is only for the emergency when there is no space left and I have uh, entered, I have get into this kind of situation many times. When I was, you know, delivering a training on Oracle and there was no space left because Oracle itself required around 10 GB space and there was no space available on my system. So what I did is simply added a disk, created a partition on it, mounted it and then I installed Oracle on that partition. So that is quite uh, quite common things. Like I was delivering a training on Sybase, uh, the Oracle was also going on, Sybase was also to be started and there was no space. So I did third disk. So we can continue adding the disk, we can make the space available if we know the concept of how to add a disk and how to create partitions and how to mount on it. Alright, let's take a look at the current system. Now, what I will see, uh, I'll show you the disk file, the device file, the F disk utility, how to get started with the utility, how to get started with the parted, and how to get started with G disk. 
I will show you just the interface, not the commands, not the practice, because I'll uh, come to that point later on during the session itself. But initially, let's take a look at the disk space. So df is the command hyphen h will show you the disk space and partitions. Look at the space. If you see, I have a first partition on boot partition and the rest is LVM partition which I demonstrated in the last session and around uh, 9.1 GB space is free. Now if require more space then I have to add a disk. I have already added if you notice that before I started my machine I have added the disk. Where the disk is available? For that the, the directory is slash dev. Under this if you list files there are all the devices available. All the device files are available under dev directory. How to check that? See, you can check the file with, uh, you know, SD. The file with start with the SD. So this will give you uh, the ab absolute knowledge, clear knowledge of what all disks you have and what all partitions they have. If you look at, where am I working? Take a look at, I'm working in a slash dev directory. Under slash dev, you see SDA. This SDA means this is first disk, disk number one. What is what kind of disk it is? You can see it is a block device because the first character in the uh, long list shows the type of device. It is B. B means block device. SDA1 means it is first partition on disk 1. SDA2, second partition on disk 2. SDB, this is the second disk which I added just now. You notice that I just added this disk just now. So this is the SDB, my second disk I added and this is my uh, the disk which I'm going to practice which I'm going to use for the training. Now the command for this is fdisk, f-d-i-s-k and you have to give the device file name full path, dev sdb. To take a look at the existing partitions you can see sda1 also. Let's take a look at the partitions of the existing disk, sda. No partition number, you have to specify the disk name slash etc slash sda all right oh sorry uh, dev i missed that slash dev slash sda and you see p command or m command is there to help you m is for help so let's type m this will give the list of commands which you can type you see a bootable flag toggle uh, bootable flag toggle b a disk bsd label c toggle disk compatibility flag delete now Let's not get into the entire list. Let me talk about the important options. Important is D for deleting a partition. L, list non-partition types. M, print this menu. N, add a new partition. P, print the partition table. So, P is the command which I'm looking for right now. So, I have two partitions on the disk if you look at. SDA1, SDB, SDA2. And the type of the partitions are, this is Linux partition and second partition is L Linux LVM. Now, if you notice that I demonstrated that also during Grub bootloader, that second partition was not visible because it was LVM. And if you remember, I use insert mode LVM and then I could see that LVM type partition there also. So, and this is also verifying the same fact which I discussed in the previous session. Second partition is, is used for LVM and the system ID is Linux LVM. So, P for printing a partition, write for write the partition table to the disk and exit. Right? So, important command are W, T change the partition system ID like from uh, Linux to Linux LVM, Linux LVM to another. I'm not going to change the existing system because it will destroy my system I'll not be able to boot my system again if I change make any changes to these disk but I'm going to do everything here uh, on my second disk so to quit from here you can use simple Q this will quit from the disk now let's look at the second disk which I have added SDB so P print partition table and you see there is no partition created on the disk so if you see that the first disk has some partitions, two partitions were there. The second disk which I added before I started the session, there was there's no partition on the second disk. So I'm going to add partitions to this and the M command gives you the help of available options and the important one if you spend some time on it, 5-10 minutes, that will be sufficient. 
add a new partition is n command. Let's use n command to create a new partition. N. As I told you, F disk give you the option to create two types of partitions, primary and extended. You can have total four partitions, primary, or you want to create extended, so you have to create three partition primary and one extended. And that extended can be used for logical partitions, up to 12 logical partitions. So therefore, I'm going to create first primary partitions, P. The default partition number is one. Of course, we can have only four. First sector is the default sector. This is important. Here we make mistakes. And I have seen participants making mistakes at this point. Last sector plus sector, if you know the sector, if you don't know, I don't know this mathematics, I don't know this uh, sector number into uh, kilobytes and megabyte. Therefore, I have better option which is given or plus size KMG. You can either type kilo or megabyte or gigabyte. So I'm going to use plus. Plus is very important and this is common mistake. Participants forget to type plus sign. Plus 1G because I want to create one GB partition or let's say 512, 512M megabyte plus 512M means my first partition is going to be 512MB and the partition is created. Now you P print partition table, you see the first partition dev sdb1 is created and the partition type Linux. Now, if you want to change the partition for to be used for RAID device, for that you need to change the partition ID. How to change the partition ID? Let's take help again. How to change the partition system ID? T command. You see partition change the partition system ID. So, I'm going to type T. But I don't know what all partitions are. And I don't know what will be the system ID for RAID. And that help is available here only. It says type uppercase L. So let's type L to see the list of available partition types and from where we'll select the read type system ID. So here you can see the read device is FD. Whether you see that or not, FD is the read device, Linux read auto. FD. So I can type read auto. If I want to create LVM, you can see 8E is for LVM. You have to find out. By default, 83 was the default one. That is 83. 83 is for LVM. Oh, sorry. 83 is for normal Linux partition. 8E is for LVM. FD is for Linux RAID Auto. So you change whatever you want to now. So for example, I want to use it for normal partition Linux 83, which was default. So I don't have to do anything. But if I want to use it for RAID, I have to type FD. Now if I print partition table. I see that uh, system ID is RAID Auto. Let me change again. I'm not comfortable with it. I want to change it back to my normal 83. So I know that that 83 is now the code. Now I can print partition table again. Now it is back to ID is 83 and system auto. And that's one partition I wanted to create right now. And I just type W because W is the command to write the partition table and exit W. So I'm writing W quit and exit. Now the disk partition is created. Same thing we can do with the jdisk command, gdisk command. Now question mark for help. Here only uh, there the help for command was available with m command. Now it is question mark. But commands are same. If you look at b gpt partition label, d delete a partition, i show detailed information on a partition, l list known partition type. Concept interface is same absolutely. Let's try to create a new partition here, N. Now here, this is what I was trying to tell you. The only difference with F disk and G disk is F disk allows you to create four primary partitions or one primary plus three extend, uh, three primary plus one extended partitions. With G disk, you can create up to 128 partitions because G disk use GPT partitioning scheme. So if you want to see the detailed information on a partition, you can type I. Right? I means show detailed information on a partition. First sector, it is asking for you first to create a partition type. So I am not pressing anything. 
right? Last actor, it is taking the default value. I'm pressing Control C here. I'm coming out of it. Let me do it again. Question mark for help. P, print partition table. You can see the existing partition is already available. The one which I created. Let me create a new partition here. The command is same thing, N command. Create a new partition. Partition number 2. Okay, default is 2. Size of the partition. Let me create plus 512. Process is same. So, 512M. This is my second partition of 512MB. Alright, last sector plus. So, I give uh, plus 1024. So, current Linux file system type is Linux file system. I am okay with it. P partition table. Now you see my second partition is created. So I have two partitions now. One is 512 MB, one is 1 GB. And now W for write and quit. Do you want to proceed? Yes. That's the only difference between the two. More or less the interface is similar. If not same, they are similar. Next is parted utility. P A R T E D. Parted slash dev slash S D B. Same command, help to GNU parted, help to view the commands available, help. So this is the command to display uh, the help and here you can type everything, help command which I have just seen. So write or print the partition table, you can see the commands available here. What do you want to do with the command? So we will see this command also. So there are three utilities, let's start. Now we will see the, uh, the theoretical part of it and some side effects or e extra information about these commands. After the demonstration, now you will find it easier to understand, I am sure. So these are the three utilities which we have talked about. I have just shown you df-h, fdisk-l will show you the list of partitions. The term file system without space or file space system is one and the same thing are interchangeable. Both are used in official Linux documentation. Output of df command with other use, others commands is used to see the additional space or the extra space requirement and identify that what do we need to do. That can be useful when you need to expand the space available to appropriate file system like for example slash home partition or slash temp or slash where or you have your own uh, you know uh, directory or mount point where you want to expand or extend the extra space. If the output of the mount co uh, command confuses you, then you can use find mnt command which prints all the file system, uh, file system like a tree like format. The mounted file systems, which partition, which file, file system is mounted where. So availability, so find mnt command can be used. fdisk utility now this is what i have just demonstrated fdisk utility is common to many operating systems mac os has fully featured a version of fdisk fdisk work with partitions created using traditional mbr partitioning scheme as, as i told you or newer systems that run uefi firmware rather than traditional bios you may see different partitioning standard gpt FDisk support of GPT is considered experimental, although it supports that, but you don't you don't use that. It is not advisable. It is advisable to use GDisk instead of uh, FDisk for GPT partition schemes or GPT based disks. So JDisk or FDisk. If you are using MBR partitioning scheme or MBR based style, you can use FDisk. If you are using GPT or UEFI firmware then you use JDisk. Conceptually they are both used for creating partitions. The FDisk and the help and more. So this is what we did slash FDisk and the disk name dev VDA or SDA or SDB or whatever the command is whatever the disk name is and after that you see the command list for after you type M, M for help and this is what I demonstrated. To start working with FDisk, add a disk, which we did. If there is no space left, and then start the FDisk. When you start FDisk, type M to list the FDisk commands, which we did. 
and I demonstrated exactly the same screen. I hope you recollect the screen and Q to quit from here. So this was the demonstration which I already gave you. After a new drive is installed on Linux, it is not configured with partitions. When you add a disk, it is not available to be used. First you have to make a file system on it. In fact, the first step is uh, create partitions on it. Then you make file system on it and then you mount it. So these are the steps, sequence of steps. Let's go once again. Step number one, add a disk. Step number two, create partitions on it. Step number three, make a file system on the partition. Step number four, mount it on a directory where you can see the content or see can, where, where you can add the partition or make an entry into F disk. So these are the four steps which are used to make a disk available for use. The F disk utility can be used to configure partitions on physical or virtual disk attached to the system. This is what we did. We added a virtual disk. If you have added a two more disk to a virtual machine and you have three different disks, so you can you have the disk name dev VDA, dev VDB, dev VDC. In our case, we stand for virtual disk. This is for Linux machines. Physically, if you are using Linux machines and KVM based virtualization. I'm using Oracle VirtualBox. In my case, Oracle VirtualBox on Windows machine, I was using, I was seeing the machine, uh, the disk name as SDA, SDB, SDC. And you notice that SDA, SDB, SDC. SDA was the first disk, SDB was the second disk. SATA, PATA, SAS, SCSI, all represented are as SDA, SDB and so on. If a newly added drive has not been used by RHEL uh, and you start F disk, you will get this, the disk label. You need to specify the disk label because that is a partition table. So first thing is you need to create a partition table on that. So by default it is automatically created. If not, you have to create it. You may see this kind of thing, building a new DOS disk label with a disk identifier. If you don't create a partition after opening the F, uh, F disk, it will automatically it, uh, uh, write F disk disk label to the drive. And this disk label is mandatory. And because I, I did not demonstrate it, uh, because uh, it was already available. So when you install it, every time, you know, when you add a disk every time and you start it, it is definitely uh, automatically created. And the disk is added, disk label is added automatically. Using F disk in a nutshell, we have already seen that and I have demonstrated each and every command. Let's take a quick look at and this is a revision for you. I'm sure you, you have to take it as a revision that yes, we have seen it and it is a revision for us. At F disk command line prompt, start the, with the print command P to examine the partition table. Then you create a new partition N with N command. Generally, the partitions are either primary or logical P or L. If it does not already exist, you can create or uh, you can also create an extended partition E to create logical partitions. In a device formatted with the MBR scheme, you, you can have up to four primary partitions which corresponds to number one to four. One of the primary partition can be configured as extended partition. The remaining partitions are logical partitions number five and above up to 12 you can have. With extended partitions, you can create maximum of 12 logical partitions on the drive. If the free space is available, FDisk start the new partition at the first available cylinder and uh, sector or the cylinder available on the disk. So we have uh, created a partition using FDisk and you have seen this. When partitions are added or changed, you generally don't have to reboot to get Linux to read the new partition table unless another partition on the drive has been formatted and mounted. If so, then uh, you will get an error because if you, the partition is already created and mounted and you try to create a new partition on it, you will get error because it is uh, you are already using a partition which is created. Warning, rereading the partition table failed because the device or resource is busy. Quite logically, you cannot cut the, cut the branch of a tree on which you are sitting. You are using a partition, it is mounted, 
so you cannot delete it naturally so you you should be careful about that you are not uh, deleting the partition on a existing partition part probe dev sdb will read and will search for the newly created partitions and you will be able to see that this was earlier it was a mandatory kind of command i remember but now we don't require it because they are automatically detected by linux kernel many partition types are available that also i showed you i demonstrated one feature of special interest is based on the t command i demonstrated t command to change the partition system identifier if you need a space for logical volume or raid array or even swap space that command is important after typing t you are prompted to enter the new partition number and then you have to uh, press the uh, you have to type the logical partition type right so first character t then select partition number 1 and then the type the code hexadecimal code for the partition which you want to change and to see the existing code you type l which i did it's not limited to linux partitions unless you are making a change type identifier by default is 83 which is linux standard or linux native you will be returned to f desk command prompt after changing the partition system id and you notice that i i exactly demonstrated the same sequence these are the commonly used partition types the list was quite huge but the commonly used partition types are this 5 for extended partitions 82 for linux swap 83 is for default linux partitions 85 is for uh, extended partitions 88 is a plain text partition table rarely used 8e is lvm fd is raid array and practically my important list as if you ask me what are the important partition numbers or partition ids according to you are these 4 1 2 3 and 4 that's it oh sorry fourth one is swap these four 82 linux swap 83 normal linux type 8 e lvm fd raid these are the four partition types which are useful for me system ids not partition type system ids partition system ids so using fdix delete a partition quite easy d is the command fdix slash dev slash sdb or vdb command p for print partition table d for delete and it will ask you for the partition number and it will be deleted the w command is to save partitions and come out of that uh, save the partition table and come out of the command so quite simple if you remove a partition the partition table on the disk is modified to reflect the change but the actual data on the partition is not removed this means that if you recreate the partition using the same layout your data will be there it is worth trying this procedure in case you accidentally delete a partition by mistake this is for you to practice you can try this command f disk create a swap partition same way exactly i don't think i need to demonstrate it now because you just need to change the system id let's create a system swap space and let's make it usable in fact let's do the uh, complete cycle after this session uh, you know once i finish this so i'm leaving it because the t command is which we which is required to change the partition system partition system id and the 82 was the id which we need to type we just discuss that 82 is a swap partition system type or system id the jdisk utility is similar if not same similar because it can offer 128 partitions mbr scheme uses 32 bit logical addresses which supports disk drive up to 2 terabyte but the gpt format relies on 64 bit addresses which support drive up to 8 million terabyte look at the wow size it support 2 terabyte and 8 million terabyte look at the size supported by jdisk although you could use f disk and select g command to switch to gpt partition table format but the g disk is only exclusively uh, created for this purpose developed for this purpose so preferred choice is g disk 
if you are familiar with f disk j disk would be definitely familiar too because you will find it same so j disk also demonstration i just gave you j disk dev sdc or sdb the device name the device which is added i showed the demonstration of j disk also the party utility the third utility in addition to create check destroy partitions you can also use parted to resize and copy partitions as well as file system contained therein its foundation for uh, this parted utility is foundation for multiple gui based partitioning tools including g parted utility in some ways parted utility may be more risky for example if you run make label command on parted prompt on an existing rhl system it will delete all existing partitions and changes will be written while the parted is still running that means it is irreversible to start parted on a given partition you start parted followed by the disk name and you see the prompt and here you start typing the commands which we will do just now let us assume that you have a disk slash dev slash sdc on a virtual machine your computer may have a different drive you can check the output from df or f disk hyphen l for the clue when parted is run it opens its own command line prompt enter help which we did to see the help uh, on available commands a wide variety of commands are available at the parted interface when compared with f disk and j disk parted can do much more in uh, comparatively at the parted prompt let's start with print command to list the current partition table assume that sufficient unallocated space is available then you can use mk part or even make format file system mk part fs so help mk part is definitely worth trying let's try print and help mk part and mk part fs let's take a look at So here we are slash dev slash sdb print. So this will print my partition table, and you see I have printed the partition table. So this is my partition table, mk part. In fact, let's try the help help mk part fs. I want to take help about this command mk part. This is the mk part command. So help mk part part type start end make a partition. Part type is the primary logical or extended. So mk part then primary because it says that first is the command and then part type part type can be either primary or logical or extended so i am using primary because i am going to create partition primary partition mk part primary then file system type that it suggests you you can type file system type can be btrfs nilfs2 ext4 ext3 ext2 ext all the partition type right linux swap so what am i going to do is i'm going to type xfs i'm sure it supports xfs also let's see whether i can see that xfs xfs is available not available btrfs xfs i'm trying to figure out i don't is there yes it is there xfs so xfs is the file system type and then after that start and end start and end so start is the disk location such as 4 gb or 10% so uh, because i have already used 1.5 gb right so i'll use 1.5 g and let's make it in fact uh, yeah 1.5 g 1.5 g and the end is 2gb 
right? 1.5 G and 2 GB. If there is any problem, it will uh, tell it very clearly that this is something wrong and with a command. So let's enter and see whether it is done or not. You requested a partition from 1500 MB to 2000, which is precisely the right thing, which I'm uh, okay. The closest partition we can uh, manage is this. Uh, do you accept this? Yes, I accept it. Warning, resulting partition is not properly aligned to the best performance. Ignore, cancel, ignore. And parted. Now print the partition table. Now you see the third partition is created. So I have created the third partition also. And uh, now I can quit. And because it does not require the printing or uh, writing to the disk. And we have done it. Now let's take a look at the commands and the other side effect of this command because that's more important to understand what are the uh, precautions which we need to take care. So we have seen print command, we have seen help mk part, we have created a partition. Let's look at other options in this command. The first step when you add a disk is definitely to create a partition table. Before you can do anything else, you need to create a label on the disk if you have added a new disk and for that mk label command is used so mk label new disk label type ms dos that will and if you remember uh, when you use mk label it will remove the existing partitions and this is worth trying let's try Because we are practicing, so it is okay if the partition goes in this series, in, in this uh, you know process. So parted dev sdb mk label ms dos existing disk label on this will be destroyed and all data on the disk will be lost. Do you want to continue? Yes. And now print. Look at this. All the partitions gone. And this is what the point is. And this is what the FDisk, uh, you know, parted utility is. It, uh, uh, it gives you very clearly, I told you, that if you use parted on an existing disk, it will destroy it and it is irreversible process. You will not get back the data. So if the existing partitions are there, it will destroy all the partitions and uh, it will, now you, it, you, you start with make part, MK part. So command is quite interactive, mk part, make partition. It will ask you primary extended or what? You type primary. File system type, xfs, start 1 MB and 500 MB. For parted we use M 1 MB to start partition sector at this location. So let's use this command and to create a partition. Let's do this. Process same. mk part simple mk part partition type primary or extended primary file system type ext2 no xfs start 1 mb and 512 all right parted done print to print the partition table so first partition is created which is of 512 MB size and this is how easy it is. Let's continue. Although we could create, uh, we could have used 0 MB as the starting point that would have generated a warning because partition would not have been properly aligned at 1 MB boundary for the best performance. Now to review we have done that print command. This is first partition we have created, the file system type column will be empty. The GYT parted tools or G parted or QT parted support formatting of a wider variety of file system even though they are just front end to the parted command only. Because parted is so exhaustive features, list of features that you can do much more with the parted command. All you need to do from the parted prompt is to use the RM to delete a partition. If you want to delete a partition, quite easy. Of course, if you are deleting a partition from existing disk, you are taking a risk of losing the data. Therefore, it is advisable that you take the backup of the data, you unmount the partition, 
make sure the partition is not configured in etcfs tab and after that you can simply delete the partition by typing rm command rm followed by the partition number so in our case our partition only partition 1 was available as db1 so we could type rm1 to delete that partition so create a swap partition same way mk part extended or primary primary partition type ext2 linux swap we want to create 501 mb and 1000 mb and to view the print partition table let's do this also linux swap partition let's create a linux swap partition now here again we are creating mk part primary linux swap start 512 we already gave so 513 and 1 512 size so i am giving end to 1024 and p print the partition table so i have created another partition of 512 mb for swap and this is what it is done to remove the partition we have the rm command as i demonstrated so i'm not removing it but i am continuing with the demonstration along with the discussion so we have done the uh, linux web partition also after print command changing partition type mk swap sdb2 swap on sdb2 let's take a look at this also because we have created the partitions and now we want to use the swap partitions this is sometime for performance if your performance is down and you want to use more swap as swap space we know that our second partition is swap type right so first command after this is particularly useful in case of swap type partitions so i need to use mk swap on the swap partition so slash dev slash sdb2 this will make the swap and then swap on the second command is swap on and this swap is not out now on and now you can see the extra space swap has been added to your system and you got more temporary memory for swap purpose so swap has a special because you can make an entry into fs tab also to make it permanently available even in case of system is rebooted when a new partition is created with parted it can change its type with set command like by default uh, that was a linux type if you want to change it to lvm or linux raid we can change the file system type with set command so set partition number flag to invert lvm new state on or off off on and you can use print command so this is to change the partition system ids with parted utility you can use similar steps to configure a partition or compared uh, component for a raid array it is also a flag just substitute raid for lvm right so parted dev sdb print to see the partition table f disk hyphen l to see the disk labels on the partition graphical options we have graphical options also if you are using uh, you know gui based so gnome disk is the command uh, without discussing much let's directly take the demonstration on this gnome disks and this is the gui option available for creating partition now you may say why you were discussing that command line that was so complex and now it is quite simple it appears that it is so easy to understand and work with it we created 4 gb disk in which we created two partitions first 512 second 
512 swap partition and you see that settings here you can click on this button to change the setting or resize or edit partition or format partitions or create partition image or restore partition to add this is a free space 3.3 GB if you want a new partition you can click on plus sign and a size of the partition which you want to create 1024 MB and then next logical volume any logical volume which you want to specify and then create so partition is created third partition 1.1 GB partition is created ext4 type you want to change the partition change the partition change the file system check file system edit partition format add you know see options edit mount options create partition image right so let's edit the partition so Linux type we want Linux swap type or LVM let's take LVM and same thing LVM and change now this partition is LVM type so point is quite simple this is a GUI feature GUI based partitioning management scheme or disk management utility and that's easy to work with compared to the F disk and J disk but as I said you know you may not get the luxury of using the graphical options in your production therefore it is better to use with the uh, command line F disk and J disk so F disk hyphen L to see the list of partitions F disk P command to print and this we have already done this is a new to create a new partitions there is nothing new in this this is again a new uh, example of creating a new partitions on this I have already done it same way it is parted prompt XFS type partitions MK part we have done this also print quit right we have done this command that's all for this session I hope you enjoyed it thank you